Hi folks, welcome to Bristol Aerospace Spotlight Talks. My name's Dennis and I'd like to talk to you today about Concorde's propulsion system. Here then is Concorde's propulsion system. There's four of them on Concorde and many people point to these and say, oh, the engine. Well, they're not wrong, but the propulsion system is much more than just the engines. If we look at this diagram, we can clearly see the engine in the middle and at the back some large nozzles, which are called secondary nozzles. And in the front, the air intake system. These three units make up the propulsion system that are housed in each of these nacelles. There's also two small doors that allow air to enter or exit depending on flight conditions. I'll go through each one of these units and tell you a little of what they do. And we'll first start with the engines. This shows you the Concorde engine we have on display in our museum and I can use it to show you how it works. The engines are a Rolls-Royce Snackma Olympus 593 Mark 610. It's a turbojet engine with reheat. The engine operates by having at the front a low pressure compressor whose job is to draw air into the engine and raise its pressure. It passes this on to another compressor, the high pressure compressor, which also raises its pressure and passes air on to a combustion chamber where fuel is added, mixed and set light to. This causes the fuel air mixture to rapidly expand and travel rearwards, driving two turbines. The high pressure turbine and behind this, the low pressure turbine. The high pressure turbine drives the high pressure compressor and the low pressure turbine drives the low pressure compressor. Finally, the fuel air mixture and exits at a very high velocity through the exhaust jet pipe. This action starts Concorde moving and accelerating and at maximum power can produce 32,000 pounds of thrust. To further assist the engine, a reheat system is fitted. Unfortunately, the reheat variable nozzles are not shown on our engine here. A reheat system, it's sometimes called after burning, is a means whereby we can boost the power of an engine. And this is achieved by spraying fuel inside the jet pipe and set light to, similar to the main engine combustion system. This, further, this action further increases the velocity of the gas flow and will increase the thrust of this engine by 20%. Thus, it'll give us a final total of 38,000 pounds of thrust. A reheat system uses a lot of fuel, so it's only used for very short durations. It's normally fitted to military aircraft, but fitted to Concorde to give it the added power for takeoff and through the sound barrier. Let's now look at these large nozzles on the back. As we know, they're called secondary nozzles. Sometimes they're called eyelids or buckets. They operate separate from the engine and their primary job is to move to control the airflow through the engine. They combine with signals from the air intake system to fine tune the engine and keep the engine operating at its most efficient. But they also do two other jobs. They help reduce the noise of the engine at takeoff and they do this by allowing air to be directed between the fast moving jet exhaust and the relatively slow moving air around the aircraft. The last job it has is on landing. 
These can be, uh, and the nozzles can be selected to close and redirect the air coming from the exhaust forward to act as a braking system. It's called reverse thrust. This helps the slow Concorde down rapidly. Finally, we can go to the front and have a look at the air intake assemblies, which are the most critical part of the whole propulsion system. This 11-foot rectangular variable geometry section has two moving ramps to control the air entering the intakes. These ramps move to control the correct amount of air in a form that is acceptable to the engine at all flight and engine operating conditions. Once Concorde starts to move and accelerate, then air is starting to be rammed into the engine intakes. No jet engine can accept air entering the engine compressors at speeds more than about 350-400 miles an hour. The airflow increases as Concorde approaches the speed of sound, and these ramps move to produce oblique shock waves that reduces the airstream's velocity to an acceptable level that the engine can manage. Excess air is vented around the engine. The air intake system is controlled by a very advanced control unit that needs to pick up information on what the engine is doing, what the aircraft is doing, and then work out the correct position for the secondary nozzles and the intake ramps to regulate the airflow to satisfy engine operating conditions. These three units working together were one of Concorde's fantastic engineering achievements in the early 70s and is a major contribution to Concorde's improved efficiency whilst cruising supersonically and up to Mach 2. That's a very quick look at Concorde's most complex propulsion system, but I hope I've been able to interest you such that you'll come and visit us at Aerospace Bristol to learn more of Concorde's fascinating facts. Thanks for listening.